What's going on everybody? Miata Dad here, Greg Peters with the Car Passion Channel. And today I've got the ECU out of the Miata. I'm gonna show you how to do a little mod internally that'll help you unlock a feature that you might not otherwise have. Now I know this is a little bit obscure, but I figure if I need it, someone out there might need it, and this video can help them achieve their goal. Now I will say that without the help of tuning Yoda, Toby at Advanced Engine Dynamics, I would have no idea that this mod even existed or how to do it. So big thanks to him. If you guys ever need any sort of Miata tuning services, dyno tuning services in SoCal, be sure to hit up Advanced Engine Dynamics. I'll link their stuff down below. But uh, yeah, let's jump into this ECU and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you the reason why we're gonna be adding what's called an analog input. Now, this is a map of the options port on the back of an MS3 or an MS Pro, and it's got a bunch of letters, and it gives you the pinout right here. You can see it lists every pin down there and what type of uh, connection it is or what kind of input. And you can see pin C and pin D, analog input one and analog input two. Now, analog input pins are what you use to hook up a five volt reference. Basically, any type of coolant temperature sensor, air intake temperature sensor, uh, map sensor, wideband, anything that has a zero to five volt variable output can be input to one of these analog input pins and then data logged with mega squirt and shown on your gauges in tuner studio etc so you can see here that they're nice enough to give you two analog inputs so you can add two additional sensors which can be then data logged you'll simply pin the signal wire into the correct pin on the options port and then you go into tuner studio and tell it what to look for and set up the sensor and whatnot and then bam you can add additional things like that but something peculiar that you'll see inside Tuner Studio is when you go to set up one of these pins, you've got options in your menu for analog input one, analog input two, and analog input three. And what's going on here is the board of Megasquirt has analog input three. It's just not pinned out to anything, so you can't access it. So all we have to do is get it from the board to a pin, and then we can access it there and add a third additional analog sensor with our Megasquirt setup. Now, I certainly can't promise that this is the same on all Megasquirts, but as you just saw, if you've got more inputs in Tuner Studio than your actual Megasquirt allows, then it might be possible to do this mod. I have a 90 to 90 93 MS Pro plug and play. I have a 1992 Miata. Your Mega Squirt always has to match the year of the chassis, not the engine. Uh, I've got a 2001 engine in my car. So if you look at this giant row of pins here, you can see one labeled AN1, and to the left of that, AN2, and just below that, AN3, which would be your analog input three that is not connected to anything. Essentially what you have to do is take a tiny wire and solder it from analog input three over to a pin that you're not going to use. That's the inside of the options port. And I'm basically going to cut one of those pins and solder on the analog input three, and hopefully I will get a third analog input. Now, one that I'm gonna cut as one of the additional injector drivers. This board has eight injector drivers. Since I only have a four cylinder engine, I only use four of them, and I don't make near enough horsepower to need uh, a second set of staged injectors, so I do not foresee ever needing eight injector drivers. So I'm just gonna hijack one of those pins and run that over to the analog input three. I have never soldered on anything this small before. My soldering iron is not well equipped for it, but I am going to give it a try anyways because gosh darn it, I wanna add some more sensors. It's a little tricky to get access to the pin that I want to use because of course it's gonna have to be on the bottom of the options port where it's completely inaccessible. So I'm gonna take this apart a little bit further and there you can see got much better access to all those pins. And the one I'm actually going to hijack is this bottom pin that is closest to the edge of the board. It's time to get sketchy, boys. Am I nervous? Heck no. I got this advice from Tuning Yoda. He said it's fine. 
This is actually, to me, this is not even the scary part. To me, the scary part is gonna be attempting to solder that tiny little wire on. Obviously, these pins cannot touch each other. So I've taken that pin and bent it completely away so it cannot touch any of the other pins. But since that's kind of free and floating now, I mean, it's rigid, it's not gonna go anywhere. But I am also going to insulate that with heat shrink wrap. literally picked the board up by it so I think that solder is strong enough it's not gonna be that big of a deal if it comes loose I just won't have a reading okay after several attempts it looks like we actually have a strong solder now solder the other end to this pin and freaking put this thing back in the car and hopefully not fail Okay, so there's the shrink wrap to prevent that pin from contacting any other pins. And um, I guess we're done. It ain't pretty, but sure as heck beats buying a $360 micro squirt just to get some extra inputs and paying all that money for a bunch of functionality that I'm not gonna use. So um, yeah, I guess it's time to put it back in the car and test it out and see if it works. All right, now that the ECU is modded, I can get my sensor hooked up. Of course, I'm gonna put it into that analog input three and see if it works. Now, what I'm doing here is adding another map sensor. It lists the calibration, which is 1.1 kPa at zero volts, 315.5 kPa at five volts. I'm just gonna go to advanced engine generic sensor inputs, and I'm gonna add a sensor. If you remember in a previous video, I added the compressor speed sensor in there. Now I'm gonna come over to analog three, which is the one I just unlocked. We're gonna call it map number two. It is linear, zero volts represents 1.1, five volts represent 315.5, that is in kPa. And I'm actually gonna go bring the laptop in the car now. I'll burn those changes, set up a gauge, and we'll see if it works. I don't know what he thought he was doing on my turf, but we'll let it slide this time. Okay, so what I've done here is set up two identical map gauges. One is for the ECU map sensor, one is for the secondary map sensor and I've hooked the secondary map sensor up to the intake manifold, so both of these should have the same reading when the engine is running. So let's see what happens when we go to on here. Oh yeah, I love it when this happens. What do we got? Ooh, very, very close. Let's fire it up and see what it reads. So obviously I haven't finished cleaning up my wiring for this yet, but now I've got a secondary map sensor, which just lives right there in the engine bay. And I can plug in a vacuum line from any part of the engine into that. And Megasquirt will be able to both read and data log the pressures. And that can be used in a, a few different areas. You can data log the pressure in your crankcase. You can data log the vacuum uh, before your turbo. You can data log the pressure before the intercooler to measure intercooler efficiency. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. And that's why I add it because I, I treat my car kind of like, a, you know, it's a little science lab. And I like adding sensors and seeing what the engine's doing. What am I gonna use it for, you ask? Well, you'll just have to wait a couple videos to find out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you mod your Megasquirt to add an extra analog input. Now, I'm not exactly sure if it's like this on all Mega Squirts. Obviously not all Mega Squirts, but like plug and play Mega Squirts for the Miata. I'm pretty sure all the MS3s are like this. I'm not exactly sure. But the easiest way to find out, obviously, is if you go into Tuner Studio and you can see options for analog one, two, and three inputs, but on your options port, the diagram only lists two analog inputs, you can probably do this mod. Now, the only thing I'd say that you really need to do better than I did is 
get proper soldering equipment for use on very tiny, tiny pins on electronic boards. The soldering iron I have is pretty much just for wiring, uh, you know, just soldering wires together. And it was kind of sketchy the way I did it on the board because those pins are so close together and I had kind of a difficult time getting that in there. But it works and I'm pumped. So if you guys did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you are new. I got a bunch of content coming up that I cannot wait to share with you guys. Peace out. See you in the next one.